Poor quality of life can mean something different for every pet, but in general, it would mean when uh, the pet is having trouble doing things that it normally would do. Mobility would be one big thing. Changes in appetite, decrease in appetite. Inability to urinate or defecate appropriately. Interacting with family may not be what it used to be. Play time may not be important anymore. The pet may not be able to play. And those would be things to watch for. Sometimes I ask clients to do a calendar at home and say, evaluate your dog. Is it a good day or a bad day? And if you're having more good days than bad days, then it's probably not time yet. If we're having a lot more bad days than good days, it may be time to evaluate the possibility of euthanasia. The biggest concern I have most of the time with people is we don't want to let our pets suffer. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to do it too soon. We all have experienced that. I know I personally have experienced that guilt. One website I really like is called Lap of Love. That website has several different types of quality of life scales. They all work on getting an objective idea of how the pet's doing. It really, I found, has helped when your emotions are wrapped up in everything and sometimes it's hard to think clearly. So I'm getting personally teary-eyed because I have a dog who's 13 and a half and I think about what I would do if I knew that it was his last day. And I think about all the things that he would love to do. So if he was in the position to take a car ride and put the windows down, Dairy Queen, definitely a favorite. So if it were my dog, he loves Dairy Queen and I know many people who have gone for ice cream on that day. To me, it's really just about spending that time and enjoying their presence while they're still here with us. We've all lost pets. We know how difficult it can be to do a euthanasia, so we like to bring the client right back to the room immediately. We have a, a room that's a very quiet room, not like our normal exam rooms. The light is dimmed, and there's nice furnishings in there, sometimes some music and we will initially go in and talk to the client about what to expect, especially if they've never been through this before. And so what I tell my clients is that your pet will fall asleep and then the medicine will stop the heart and the lungs. It's usually very peaceful, they don't feel any pain, and it's a very dignified way to go. Most of our clients prefer to do a home euthanasia if their pet is really fearful of the veterinary clinic. Um, and so if that happens, we do offer uh, home euthanasias. For the best of animals, they, they, they sometimes just don't like going to the veterinarian. Uh, and they remember things, injections, or maybe a stay in the hospital. So uh, a lot of people prefer not to make that last visit that would cause increased anxiety or stress. Obviously, it comes with some disadvantages too. The owners may not want to recall the experience of their dog passing away in their living room. And that's a very personal thing to decide. Some pets do well here, um, some do a little bit better at home, and I think really the difference is the comfort level of just the owners and the pet. There's just so many ways nowadays to memorialize and remember your pet. Often people will want a small piece of hair. We can give that to them. We also offer clay paws, where we will do an imprint of your pet's paw onto a piece of clay, and then you can take it home and bake it. It's a nice way for some people to feel of a way to remember their pet. We also have a memorial wall, and it was constructed after we lost a member of our family. Nicole Reddish was the daughter of Dr. Bob Reddish, who started this practice, and it's just a way that we have to keep the memory alive of both her and the pets that we've loved and that we've lost. We do a tree during the holidays every year with ornaments of pets that have been lost and owners bring those ornaments in and we display them. And we have a nice candlelight service where they all get together and they come and talk and they share thoughts, share their feelings, share their heartbreak. And I think that's a great thing that we do to help people um, get through their, their, their tough times. You know, we like to think that we practice medicine, treating our patients and our clients as though they're family. And so my hope would be that when we offer euthanasia, that we do it in a way where it's loving and compassionate and gentle and accommodating. And all the ways that I would want my family to be taken care of is the way that I want to take care of my clients and their pets.